Hey, this is Liz. I wanted to let you know that we are on spring break this week and next week. We will be back with a brand new show on April 4th. And we'll also have a super exciting announcement for you on April 4th. So be sure to tune in. But I picked out a replay that I thought you would really enjoy. It's very timely. But this is a replay from March 13th, 2018. And on this episode, um, Do you remember when Julie and Leon threw their names in the hat as possible new secretaries of state? They have a very innovative plan for that. So you you will want to listen to that. Uh, And it's also a good reminder that Julie and Leon do, at that time, they did a recap of the show, Madam Secretary, on CBS. So um, if you are watching Madam Secretary now, because now it's on Netflix and people seem to be rediscovering the show, you should check out the podcast called Satellite Sisters Talk TV because that's Leon and Julie breaking down uh, every episode of MSEC, as they call it. And uh, I totally recommend I never watched the show on CBS, but I always listened to the podcast and found it very entertaining. Um, By the way, I know this goes without saying, but I'm just going to say it anyway. The upcoming event at the Santa Monica Public Library that we talk about on this episode, that happened in 2018. So please do not go to the Santa Monica Public Library uh, this Sunday. Um, one other nice thing about, about this show is that it's three weeks after I welcomed my dog Hooper into my family. So you get some Hooper scoop right in the first couple of weeks where, uh, where I had him. And, uh, one last thing I'm just going to give us credit for, and then you can listen and judge for yourself. This is 2018 and we, the Satellite Sisters, are already complaining about cryptocurrency and warning you. So I just want to say... We were way ahead of the curve on that one. So listen to this episode of Satellite Sisters and enjoy. We are the Satellite Sisters. Welcome to the show. It is uh, Tuesday, March 13th. I'm Liz Dolan. I'm here with my sister, Leanne Dolan. Leanne, how are you today? Fantastic. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Julie Dolan, you're in Dallas, Texas. How are you? Excited. Okay. Very well, excited, sisters. I'm very excited because I think both of you are uh, individually or as a team super qualified to become our new Secretary of State. Now that the the <laughs> slot's open again, I hear. <laughs> it's a, on Tuesday morning when there's breaking news, we get a chance to, uh, you know, add our own two cents in. So more on um, the implications of Rexit <laughs> later on. In the show. <laughs> All right, Liz, we're also going to talk about Russia and North Korea. Julie, yeah. you know, our Secretary of State, Julie Dolan, will be telling us about I, that. I have some key key insights on North Korea. <laughs> like, they should not meet until they talk to me. That's all I'm saying. Okay. okay. All right. Follow up to a story I told a couple of years ago on the show. Remember whose bright idea is this? Yes. One of my favorite stories ever. Yeah. So I'm going to recap that. I have new details and more more times to ask whose bright idea is this. So we're going to get to that. Julie, you had a near encounter with two first ladies of the United States. I was so close and yet so far. But yeah, yes, I was very, very close to two first ladies. Mm -hmm. Once again, we scooped the New York Times. Last week, we talked about dogs in the bed. Today, dogs in the bed. Look at this headline. Today's New York Times. Out of the doghouse into the bed. We were there first. Yeah. Oh, again, a week before. They just listen to the show and they copy us. <laughs> and then uh, we have a Facebook roundup yeah. where we want to tell you all about the book for March that we're going to talk about. And then I have a personal March Madness I'm going to explain. Just to- Do you have a bracket you've done? Do we, can we, <laughs> is there any betting? I should. I should do the bracket. <laughs> I should do the bracket. So, uh, but Liz... Uh- we have the big event this A couple weekend. of things up top. Yeah, this Sunday, uh, 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon, Leon and I will be at the Santa Monica Public Library with two fantastic women. We're doing a panel called Stay Noisy and just about the need for women to speak up in the workplace about things that are important to us. Speaking uh, up and making positive change. Yes, right. Right. That's yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's about things you've actually accomplished like 
fixing things. Right. We're, we're moving forward here at Satellite Sisters. Right. Yeah, I'm excited. Like, I'm the moderator, so I'm going to talk to you and yes. two other executives from the sports business and from TV land yeah. and uh, entertainment. And you guys have made positive change. So you get to be a panelist, Liz. I'm, I know. I know. <laughs> you, yeah. yeah. She's, uh, you know she's an awesome panelist. I just, she she's doesn't. solid gold. You don't have to worry about Liz, right, on the panel. I hope she doesn't talk too much. I hate yeah. when one panelist dominates, I know. Julie. I'm a little worried. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to, to worry stay about, noisy, Lynn. Yeah, you, you know. don't have to worry about the moderator dominating. No. I am happy to just ask the questions and moderate the event. Yeah. No, the only thing I'm worried about is turnout, as you know, Leon. So that's why I keep mentioning it on the show. We'd really like to see a lot of you Sunday afternoon, 2 o'clock. It's a really nice time of day to just sit and talk with your satellite sisters. One warning, if you're driving to Santa Monica, it is also the day of the uh, Los Angeles Marathon, which ends in Santa Monica. So there's going to be a little extra traffic, but you can handle it, sisters. You can do this. And, and there's only really going to be the really slow runners left in yes. the streets by two. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think of it that way. They're barely going to be running because yeah. the yeah. winners will have wrapped it all up by like 10.09. Oh, ages ago. Yeah. Yes, ages. Ages. <laughs> Starts at 8 a.m. So if you're still running at two, yeah. I mean, is it running? Really? <laughs> <laughs> and there's, you have to ask yourself that. There's ample parking. There's a huge yep. parking lot under the Santa Monica Public Library, so you don't have to worry about that. Anyway, we're looking forward to seeing you. The guest, Sarah Fisher, runs production at Shondaland. She was in D.C. this week shooting Scandal, Leanne. Oh. So she's coming home to be on our panel. Fantastic. But this week she was shooting Scandal. Mm. And Leanne Daly, I originally met when she was running marketing at ESPN, which you can imagine is a super fun, super hard job. Now she is the chairman of a big recruiting company, Retained Search firm. But she did tell me a story which we'll have her repeat about one time at a meeting, I think it was at ESPN, where she just could not get herself heard at all. So she took her shoe off and pounded it on the table. So that <laughs> positive is, change, Liz. positive change. That is the ultimate stay noisy. So we've got this Sunday, 2 p.m. All the details. If you go to our Facebook page and click on events, all the deets are there. Of course, my friend Ryan asked me this week, what time does that panel start? And I was like, go to the Facebook page. <laughs> what am I? <laughs> I had no idea. It was like two or three. I don't, I don't really know. Liz is just going to tell me when to show up. Uh, also, Liz, we're going to be, as they say in the business, dropping an episode of, we, oh, yeah, right. of your podcast, Save my for other Work. Show. Yeah. You know I two-time my sisters. I do another workplace advice show. It's changing names. It starts next week, but the show that was called I Hate My Boss last year is relaunching on Monday, and it's now called Safe for Work. Positive change, It's Liz. positive change, <laughs> yes. It's about... Like, I like oh. that title, Liz. Yeah, Thank that's you. good, because the show really wasn't about hating your boss. No. It was, you provide really pretty decent advice, Liz, if I can say so <laughs> as your sister, uh, Thank you, Julie. to all kinds of workplace situations. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and I've really enjoyed, we get a lot of email uh, from the Satellite Sisterhood over there at the other shows. So, in the Satellite Sisters feed on Monday, you're going to get a sample, like half an episode of Safe for Work. So if you already subscribe to I Hate My Boss, we still need you to go over and subscribe to Safe for Work. Oh, you do? Yes, you need you to do. Change. It's going to be a okay. separate feed. And if you could do that all on Monday, that would be that would be really good. Anyway, you'll get a taste of it. It's fun. It's going to be a little different this year. My co-host is different, but Larry will be back on occasional episodes. So you have something to look forward to. I, I'm, you know, we're recording some more uh, tomorrow. No, Thursday, <laughs> Thursday to get it done in time for Monday. So safe for work. Please subscribe. All right. Uh, so breaking news on a Tuesday morning gives us a chance to weigh in a little bit on some of the issues that we don't always get a chance to uh, touch. Uh, the uh, headline this morning was that Rex Tillerson is out at the State Department as Secretary of State. But the good news is that uh, we have two satellite sisters, each of whom are 100 percent qualified for this gig. So I'm just going to make a pitch <laughs> for one or both of my sisters. Leanne Dolan, um, you are currently working with the State Department. You are a citizen diplomat. You had a conference call with the State Department yesterday. Yesterday, because Did they mention it on the phone? Was there no, any whiff of, of I mean, the change that was about to happen? No. In fact, it was completely the opposite. Yeah. I, actually, I can't really talk about the call, but I mean... <laughs> 
No. See, see the way she said that? Doesn't that make her qualified to be Secretary of State right there? Top yeah. secret. We are not being read in on that call, Liz. Yeah, you're That's not. all I can tell you. You're Top not. secret. Yeah. So, I mean, I work on a program called the International Women of Courage with them, and it's run through the Secretary of State's office uh, and, uh, and the Office of Global Women's Issues. Yes. And so the women are arriving next week yeah. in the United States, and then they'll be arriving in Los Angeles March 29th. And yeah. So I, I belong to a nonpartisan NGO that works with the State Department on this. Okay, and so there MSEC, was, yeah, <laughs> no, no mention, <laughs> just the opposite. I would say potential MSEC candidate number one, Leah yeah. Dolan. Potential MSEC candidate number two, Julie Dolan. Julie Dolan, you have uh, lived in Russia. You yes. have been to North Korea. Mm-hmm. You have traveled all over the world to some mm-hmm. very, very strange places. Uh, and I can tell from listening to the Madam Secretary recap that you two do of the tele- <laughs> of the CBS drama, Madam Secretary, that you are 100% up on all issues related to the South China Sea. <laughs> so there you go. All fictional issues. Fictional issues. Related to the South China Sea. It's not, come on. In the current White House, fiction is fine. We're living... <laughs> it's... We're, that's Some, true. It's a good sometimes point. Sometimes fiction is healthier. So anyway, so I think you're. I think each of you as an individual would be 100 percent qualified to do this job. But I was also thinking that maybe there's an innovative job sharing arrangement, like alternating weeks. Like Leah, you work one week while Julie, you just read the Twitter, and then boom, <laughs> then you switch places. Julie's Julie's at Foggy Bottom, and you're reading the Twitter. And then I, I think you could we could you could really do a good job with this. It would be historic. Yeah, I actually I think maybe we could. I think Julie should do the hard stuff like North Korea and Russia, and I'll just go to <laughs> global sporting events. <laughs> like, I'm ready. You'd to go be to... very good at opening and closing all Olympic venues. Unbelievable! I, I think you'd be excellent. How at How about that. the World Cup? Well, this I, 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 yeah. You know, it's a big job. It's it is one of the biggest job. in Washington, and the idea for job share, Liz, I think, is actually not a bad idea. I yeah. mean, there's so much travel involved with that. You could just have one sister just flying around the world all the time. I'll go to Africa. The one, uh, like. <laughs> Like in D.C., holding on to the job. You know? I think that's true. Yeah. 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 So, and it just so happens that guess who's in Beverly Hills today? Right down the street. Oh, yes. The president of the United States is going to be here today, Julie. So his first uh, visit to California. Yeah. So yeah. I'm thinking that it's Leon's chance to like go pitch it. <laughs> it's my like, chance to do something. Just do something. <laughs> just stand right. there with the sign. Yeah, go with the job sharing idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have an MSEC for you. I'll just get a sign. <laughs> Satellite Sisters, your choice for MSEC. I mean, people don't and normally then campaign for this. Matching outfits like the ones we wore when we were children, right? <laughs> just, so we could wear matching Madam Secretary outfits. So, just all know. blue, all blue all the time, like yeah. Taya Leone. Yeah. 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 Well, we, you want know. Her, we want her wardrobe as part of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, if you don't listen to the recap that Leon and Julie do of Madam Secretary on CBS, you should. It's hilarious. You just There was a fresh episode that dropped yesterday because that's a Sunday night show. And you guys do a great job sort of taking apart the actual structure of the episode. But lots of highly entertaining commentary on everything from the wardrobe to uh, the latest breaking news in Sri Lanka. So, you know, that is a separate feed from Satellite Sisters. So go subscribe to that. It's, it's just a Satellite super- Sisters Talk TV. That's right. Oh, yeah. Satellite Sisters Talk TV. Yeah. Okay. So, Satellite Sisters for MSEC. Boom. (laughs) History being made here today. (laughs) That's that's Madam Secretary. If you don't, that's what that's short for. If you don't don't listen to our recaps. Okay. You're not into that. I'm not sure anyone calls the Madam Secretary that, but we do. (laughs) They could call us MSEC 1 and 2. Oh, thing 1 and 2. I like that. That would be so awesome. Okay. But Julie, well, you you're sort of to... volunteering on a couple of these issues already. You have a Russia update for us and a North Korea update for us today on the show. Now. Exactly. Exactly. We, I, I mean, last week, I was early on, early on, if you listen to Satellite Sisters, you heard the word about this terrible poisoning in, in, uh, in Britain, where a former spy, Sergei Skirpal, and his daughter, Yulia, were poisoned, but now it's been determined by a military-grade nerve agent. Uh, and it's that the type so that's bad. developed yeah. by Russia. It's in the Novichok class. Novichok 
project means newcomer class, and this was given to an, a, a group of advanced nerve agents, and it was developed by Russia at the end of the Cold War. Mm-hmm. And that the Prime Minister, Ter- Theresa May, said yesterday that it's highly likely that Russia was responsible for you know, for killing, for they ha- they haven't killed them, but for mm-hmm. for making Sergei Skirpal and his daughter Yulia sick with this nerve agent. Well, she obviously so, heard you say that last week on satellite. I Sisters. think that must be it. But now she has this is really hashtag the jig is up. She has given <laughs> Russia and and uh, Vladimir Putin until the end of the day today uh, to uh, to fess up to this, to take responsibility for the fact that it was you know their nerve agents that they either deployed on purpose to uh, to kill this former spy uh, and his daughter or that they have lost track of these nerve agents and now other nefarious people have the nerve agents. Mm-hmm. So I don't know exactly what she's going to do when the end of the day comes because um, so far uh, Vladimir P- Putin and Russia have, have denied Deny, deny, deny. They're yeah. denying any of this. So, so you're then, thinking they're not going to confess because she asked them <laughs> I to? Think I think that's pretty safe. You heard it here first on Satellite Sisters. <laughs> Vladimir Putin is not going to confess to okay. the attempted poisoning uh, using this nerve agent. So now what is Great Britain going to do? So this is what I wanted to ask you, sisters, in particular, that some of the things they're talking about uh, are expelling diplomats. Mm-hmm. That doesn't seem like it does much of anything, right? Do you think, Leon no. or Liz? No. Right. Why should I answer? You're right. Ask your fellow <laughs> Secretary of State, Leah. <laughs> okay, okay, I will just refer to whatever Liz. the new MSEX decide. <laughs> okay. Well, here's one for you, former uh, sports executive. They've also, one of the things they're floating around is Great Britain would not participate in the FIFA World Cup. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, like, like they're ever going to win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh gosh, they'll be knocked out in the knockout round. Too bad for England. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I always hate things like that because it punishes the athletes more than yeah. it does the country. Right. But yeah, I'd go with that. Mm-hmm. If you know you have no shot anyway, yeah, yeah do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or they're going to hold up the uh the assets of the, you know, the numerous rich Russians that live in London. I like know, it. Yeah, using like it. London as sort of a tax haven shelter for um for their wealth. Freezing. So, so, but assets. I think Love all it. of these things, uh, I mean, you know, as even Theresa May admitted, she said, we cannot outpunch Russia. And that's that's for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. So but this is startling and it is it is awful to think about this. Um, this incident happened in the town of Salisbury, where the Salisbury Cathedral is, where a lot of tourists go. <laughs> where they invented it's, Salisbury it's, steak. Salisbury steak. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, okay. somebody had to say that. I knew Leon was thinking that. <laughs> I, like, I could tell from the I look of Leon's I was like, Salisbury steak. <laughs> Okay, that too. It's so That's not true. funny. So, I'm, but, sorry. Uh, but, I'm sorry. So again, uh, another reason to travel to Salisbury. So, uh, you know, a city with like 400,000 people and, you know, that and that how did they get this nerve right. agent into uh, yeah. into Britain? Did yeah. they, you know, was this in their Ziploc bags that they're carrying through Heathrow or, you know, is it coming in on, you know, private planes? Where is this coming from? How much more is there? You know, I mean, there's a lot of very serious questions. Here. This seems so, like a job for Henry on Madam Secretary. Yeah, yeah. SEAL Team Zero <laughs> might be able to figure this out. Well, he's gone now. He's gone from the CIA. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, it so, is. It is. I mean, it's very sobering. It, it is, is very serious. sobering, mm-hmm. and it is, and that many other people, uh, in addition to Sergei Skirpal and his daughter, you know, there's another police officer who's very sick, oh. and you know, they really didn't, you know, they worried that you know many more people were exposed to this. So, uh, and I'm sure yeah, it's that just so weird that they were sitting on like a bus bench, like this, right. so obviously they were poisoned in public and just sort of collapsed in public. Right. Yeah, a lot of people could die. It's not okay. funny. It is not funny. So, uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. But, um, but I think that tomorrow there will be, you know, that Theresa May will just have to come out and, you know, and with a list of things that they're going to do to retaliate from Russia. So that's number one. The other like breaking news uh, this this past weekend is that President Trump has agreed to meet with Kim Jong Un, you know, and mm-hmm. this is uh, this was sort of a shocking turn of events. Uh, 
um, maybe some good can come of it. May, perhaps if they sit down and have conversation, uh, that at least the three hostages that are being held in North Korea, possibly they could be released. Mm-hmm. I see that as a very positive thing that could come out of that. I don't have very high expectations, and I'm and you know many you of the North tips. Korean ex- <laughs> experts are are you know are skeptical about what the motivation is for why Kim Jong Un would want to meet at this particular time, why he'd at least say that he's um, interested in denuclearizing his uh, his his uh, his program there, but uh, but we'll have to see. But I do have some insight that I think is going to be key to the success of this meeting, of this summit. One Excellent. of the places they're talking about for the summit is, of course, at the DMZ, because Kim Jong-un doesn't want to really travel outside of his home country for fear that he would be kidnapped or, or scooped up or perhaps poisoned, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. because he as well has some enemies. Um so, so one area is this, uh, this, uh, the zone between the North and the South Korea, and there is a place called the Peace House. I know you've seen it on all the news clips. It's sure. the blue building. It's a blue army barracks kind of Quonset hut that they have um, between the North and the South. And um, on my trip to North Korea, we visited this, um, we visited the DMZ and we were able to go into the Peace House and it was like a time capsule because it was built in the 1950s and it's right out of the 1950s. Everything in the room is like steel desks and steel tables and steel chairs. And in particular, I was thinking about these two world leaders, Kim Jong-un and President Trump. They're both big guys, okay? Mm -hmm. And that if they are going to have the meeting in that peace house, that that those men are not going to be able to fit on those 1950 <laughs> style steel chairs. Okay. They're going to need okay. new chairs. Yeah. That's what uh-huh. I'm telling you. That's going to be the key to these negotiations. <laughs> one, They're going to have to bring chairs. in some big, big boy chairs. Thrones. That's, I okay. think these two like thrones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Barker oh. loungers. Okay. Good recommendation, okay, I, Joel. You, you know, I'm I'm kind of serious about this because it's going to be a short meeting otherwise because it's way too <laughs> uncomfortable. I mean, you just have – you know what I mean. When you go back and you look at things from the olden times, it was like, wow, people were really small in those days, yeah, right? Right. These, these are big men. They're not going to fit in those little chairs. So that is my um, – that's my peace offering this morning. <laughs> that's my peace tip. Okay, get chairs. Well, Dennis Rodman likes it. He thinks it's a great idea. And when we're Secretary of State, yeah. he, he's going to be our undersecretary. <laughs> Special envoy. Way under. Way, Way under. under. Way under. <laughs> All right. When we come back, we've got Whose Bright Idea Is This? And Julie almost met a couple of first ladies this week. But we're going to take an ad break and thank our sponsors. Uh, Liz, Julie, we want to thank Harry's. You know, some people think of March as the spring, but I think of it as the season of Harry's. Don't you? You do? <laughs> Okay. Yes, this, this is, is it. This is when it all gears up, right? In fact, I was looking this morning. My husband needs more balm, Leanne. More balm. Harry's sh- aftershave balm. You want your man to smell good in the spring, Leanne. <laughs> That's it. Harry's <laughs> makes men's grooming products that sometimes ladies use too. It's a great shave at a fair price. You know, Jeff and Andy were two guys. We've come to think of them as like nephews uh, who were just fed up with getting charged an arm and a leg for razor blades. So they started Harry's to fix shaving. All right. That we can appreciate mm-hmm. that. They stripped out all the unnecessary necessary features. You're not going to get any vibrating handles at Harry's. And I, as a mother, think that's a fine idea. Uh, (laughs) And the unnecessary cost to deliver customers one perfect razor at an amazing price. They just want to focus on high quality blades, great shave, fair price. Okay, but it's the season of Harry's because Julie... Look Look at what we have coming up. What would Harry's be? It's a great groomsman's gift if you have a wedding coming up. It's right. great in an Easter basket if you're doing that. You're going to want to stock up for graduation, high school, or college. Those are dynamite gifts. The young guys are very impressed. I have given half a dozen to a dozen I've Harry's had this, shades. It's sets. a great gift. How about Father's Day? Father's you know, Day, Julie. You have, or maybe you know someone who's be, who's become a new father. 
Very nice little gift. You know, there's a lot of presents for new mothers. How about a new father gift? There you go. I think it could be Harry's. Yep. It could be. So if you want to check out Harry's, this is your chance, Satellite Sisterhood. You're going to want to go to harrys.com forward slash sisters. They're so confident that you're going to love their blades. They're going to give you a trial shave set for free. You have to sign up at harrys.com forward slash sisters, and you just pay for the shipping. This is a great way for you to test it out before you order. We appreciate it. We also want to thank Care.com. Care.com is the easy and reliable way to find care for everyone in the family, where and when you need it. It's the largest digital marketplace for care. What kind of care, you're wondering, Liz? Yeah, I was wondering. What kind of care, Do you need a nanny, Liz? No. No. Uh, Do you you need a sitter? No. (laughs) Do you need a housekeeper? You might. Yeah. Okay. Senior care? Sure. Sure. They got it. Someday. (laughs) (laughs) No. We certainly needed it when we had seniors. Yeah. Okay. So that's what you're going to find at care.com. Everything you need. Everything you need. People are vetted. There's all kinds of information there. They make it super easy to book care. You can book it on the spur of the moment. You can book long-term situations at care.com. You know, hey, what is, again, it's a good gift if you want. Do you have Mm -hmm. a new baby in the family? Maybe you are going to need a sitter occasionally. Maybe you are going to need a housekeeper. Well, you will. So (laughs) things are going to really go downhill with that baby in the house. (laughs) Have a new dog? You want to get rid of the hair? Yeah, Liz, how about the hairballs rolling around the house? It's quite a surprise, isn't it? It's not quite that bad yet. Oh, it's that bad at my house. Oh, (laughs) hair drifts, tire drifts of German Shepherd hair. All right, you're going to want to have help to keep things clean. You can find all that kind of help at care.com. So care.com, lots of tools there, background checks, reference checks, qualifications, certifications, anything you might need for a potential caregiver. And for Satellite Sisters listeners, this is what they are going to offer you. You're going to save 30% off a care.com premium membership when you visit care.com forward slash sisters and subscribe. Okay, that's 30% off a care.com premium membership when you visit care.com forward slash sisters. You know, so one of the best things about this is you never know when you're going to need care at the true. last minute, whether mm-hmm. it's kids or seniors or dogs or your house. You know, the idea that you can really order something up last minute, but know they've been completely checked is great. Right. I know. I was thinking like, I talk to, about care.com to a lot of friends who I know have aging parents and on the horizon, mm-hmm. they are going to need help, but yes. they don't know mm-hmm. it yet, you know? Yeah, right. And you know, one day, like a fall happens or a broken hip or a bad day, and the next day you're going to need immediate help. Mm-hmm. So I say, go to care.com forward slash sisters, just check it out. And for satellite sister listeners, you get 30% off that premium membership care.com forward slash sisters when you subscribe. Thanks, Care, for supporting Satellite Sisters. And thanks, Satellite Sisterhood, for supporting the people who support us. Okay, right. big follow-up story that's multi-years in the making, Leanne. <laughs> okay. Whose bright idea was this? All right, I'm going to take you back a couple of years. Yeah. So remember, <laughs> please do, because I can't remember who's, <laughs> whose bright idea it was. All. Yeah, okay, here's the story. So uh, a couple of years ago, I told you about a community meeting at the Rose Bowl that we had. Now, I live in Pasadena. Your community, yeah. Yeah, live in Pasadena. I live right next to the Rose Bowl. And one summer, three years ago, we had a series of concerts that sent the community into a tizzy. It was like an unrelenting, you know, army of invaders for (laughs) Eminem and Rihanna, two nights. Uh Jay-Z and Beyonce, two nights. Awesome. And then three nights of One Direction, okay? (laughs) So here's what I have to say. Eminem and Rihanna... Like, you know, the language was not good, okay? <laughs> you could hear it emanating all through the neighborhood, Eminem's language. That didn't sit well. Okay, Jay-Z and Beyonce, the loudest concert ever. You know when they say, oh, you could see that fire from space? Yeah. You could hear that concert from space. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, <laughs> And then One Direction, that was three nights of every little girl in Los Angeles being sent to the concert in a limousine, okay? <laughs> and then standing out on the street corner at 2 a.m. crying, wondering where their limousines were. Because yeah. it's hard to be a teenager in Los Angeles, you know, when you have to wait for your limo. It is hard. That's hard. Yeah. I yeah. mean, literally, there were so many limousines, they shut the freeway down. Like, they shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> that, that doesn't happen in L.A. No. That's our lifeblood, the freeways. And they, there were so many limos trying to get off the exit. So the neighborhood 
We had a meeting at the Rose Bowl. Like, you know, we have agreements in place. There are all kinds of restricted uses. We understand we live in a neighborhood with the giant 100,000 people. Yes, so you have to accept a certain level Mm -hmm. of this. But this was nuts. So people started to very gently complain. Well, the language was bad. The limos, that was bad. The noise, there's a decibel level. And and they went way over it, Jay-Z and Beyonce. There's also an 11 o'clock cutoff. And when you go beyond it, that's a no-no. But it was the elderly woman who stood up and said, well, I couldn't get to my house because they were rerouting traffic. And she was like 120 years old, Liz, and (laughs) beloved by the neighborhood. And she was driving her car. She mistakenly went through a stop sign. And she was ticketed by the police officers. Uh And this is when the neighborhood meeting broke (laughs) down. She got hundreds of dollars for this ticket. And that's when one of our neighbors stood up and said in, in a classic call and retreat, Repeat <laughs> the phrase. Whose bright idea was that? Whose bright idea? Oh, ticket it old ladies. Whose bright idea was that? And then it just the whole meeting fell apart. You Degraded know? from yeah, the- hundreds of memos. Whose bright idea was that? <laughs> so, so. Okay. okay. So flash forward three years later, mm-hmm. I'm noticing a lot of work around the neighborhood. Like the Rose Bowl is unusual because it sits on a lot of it, it, it's not surrounded by parking lots and Hooters restaurants like most major sports stadiums. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's surrounded by community, you know, uh, playing fields, a uh, public pool golf course, the pool, a children's museum, running trails. You know, it becomes a bike track, uh, the three mile loop around the Rose Bowl. It is used by thousands and thousands of people every day as a recreational site. And I start to notice all these community projects like beautification and stone walls are being rebuilt and all this kind of stuff was happening. So I said to my husband, who's now on the neighborhood committee, that's a whole nother story. I said, who's paying for all this? This sounds seems unusual. Usually they just fix up the front of the stadium because it's on TV. But this is like power to the people. Uh, yeah. And he goes, oh, it's the Jay-Z money. I said, what really? do you mean, the Jay-Z money? Because Jay-Z was so loud, and they went over went the over 11, time. they had to pay a half a million dollars in fines. And wow. the money didn't go to the city general fund. It went to the neighbors. <laughs> hey, nice. whose bright idea was that? <laughs> that's a good idea. I was like, so that's so you are now, your little community group is holding celebrities hostage. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Jay-Z, we got Jay-Z money. Jay-Z in the hood. It's, a, it's fantastic. That's so, fantastic. So I was excited about that. And then guess what they announced yesterday, Liz? What, more Jay-Z? More Jay-Z. <laughs> Jay-Z Excellent. and Beyonce are coming back to the Rose Bowl in September. More Jay-Z money. Liz. It completely changes the neighborhood attitude, doesn't it? I feel it? like everyone's going to get a pool in the next round. Like, I don't care if he... See, that's it. Everyone has a price, Liam. That's it. It doesn't, you know... The language. No standards. It's all Everybody fine has a number. Yep. And apparently, Jay-Z has found your number. Jay-Z. Whose bright idea was that? Thanks, Jay-Z. That's very exciting for... For yeah. everybody in the Well, you in don't your think when you hear like, oh, they're going to get fined, you think, well, that's never going to happen. Well, yeah. it did. Yeah. It happened to the tune of like a half a million dollars. <laughs> and now, now we have new stone walls and native okay. plantings. So <laughs> thanks, Jay-Z. <laughs> Whose bad idea was that? All right. Well, I was thinking about that because um, I saw a story the other day where that same exact thought popped into my mind. Like, Whose bright idea was this? So here are the facts on this. This was in the the New York Times business section a couple of days ago. You might have heard about this. Uh, It created quite a backlash. United Airlines. So already you know you're in trouble. Once it's an airline. mm. Okay. (laughs) United Airlines announced that it was replacing a standard bonus for their employees with a lottery that would give nothing to most of its 90,000 workers while awarding lavish prizes like $100,000 in cash or a Mercedes-Benz to a few lucky winners. Oh, you're okay, kidding. Okay, so no bonuses. I hadn't heard this. But somebody's going somebody's gonna to get a Mercedes-Benz. So United had hoped that the sweepstakes would, quote, build excitement and a sense of accomplishment. But after they announced it, workers deluged the company with hostile comments. And the airline said last week that it was pressing the pause button on these changes. Okay, okay, good idea. So, but what it did, as it says in this article, the fiasco pulled back the curtain on the widespread use of game-like techniques 
for motivating employees. And you're starting to see this in a lot of companies now where workers can earn points and badges by completing certain tasks or performing well. Like all of that nonsense that you get on like Facebook or various apps. Like, yeah. I don't need Farmville. no stinking, I don't need no stinking badges. Okay. <laughs> I know. I just don't, I, no stinking badges for me. Are they giving out cryptocurrency perhaps? <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Am I the only one that all of my junk email now is about cryptocurrency? <laughs> it just seems like my, the entire sisters at Satellite Sisters mailbox, really? cryptocurrency. Hmm. So that's good. Julie talks about Russia all the time. <laughs> So anyway, fun. so a number of experts on this have weighed in. This Kate, Caitlin Petrie is an assistant professor of media studies at Rutgers, and she's looked at this at a bunch of different media companies. And here's the problem. Shareholders and management get the monetary rewards, and meaning and excitement are consolation prizes that go to the workers. This is very much in line with her understanding of how, now here's the word, of how the gamification trend in workplaces operate. Uh So gamification, I just want to say, don't gamify me, bro. That's it. Don't gamify (laughs) me. But the actual problem here is that there's been loads of research done into this and it works. So come on, people. Uh, Don't (laughs) fall for it. Don't fall for the gamification. It says a pile of psychological research has shown that these kinds of bonuses and games can be cheaper and more effective at motivating workers than straight cash. And there was a study published in 2012 where employees at a, you know, they filled out a health risk assessment and they got a modest chance to win $125 in a lottery versus getting a $25 gift certificate and people went for the first thing rather than the second. So Uh. come on, just do not allow yourself to be gamified. I don't know how I can convince you that this is not in your long-term interest. You need to focus on like your paycheck and your bonuses and the actual (laughs) compensation you're getting from your company. And, uh, and a lot of the experimentation on this has been done by um, Uber. You know, Uber was one of the first companies to use game-like incentives so that to incentivize their drivers to keep driving. Yeah. And they realized it was cheaper than real bonuses. They would have these little games and you would get rewards and badges and things. So here's another little thing I'm going to say. Like, if More Uber, reason to hate the sharing economy. Yes. If Uber's <laughs> doing it, it's a bad idea. Yeah. Okay? Okay? Don't gamify me, bro. Don't Uberfy me, bro. Um, it just made me, the whole thing made me think of a tweet I saw the other day from a woman who I follow on, um, on Twitter. I listened to the 538 uh, podcast, um, politics podcast, and Claire Malone is the politics reporter on that. And did you know, like this year, it's very nice that International Women's Day has become a thing. Right. But. It's just a thing. It's kind of a like it's now a, it's a selling opportunity. Yes, every it's a email, thing. every email in my box was like, "Oh, it's International Women's Day. Why uh, don't you order some sexy bathing suits?" Yes, what? <laughs> we got a million horrible pitches at Satellite Sisters yes, for did. International <laughs> Women's Day. Along those, like, oh, International Women's Day. You know, yeah, buy some eyeliner. What? <laughs> So, but here's what Claire Malone tweeted out, and this is the way I feel, like United Airlines, pay attention here. She said, happy International Women's Day. I think I speak for all of us when I say we'd prefer your appreciation expressed in large cash bonuses. <laughs> yes. So, yes. Yes. there you go. Take take the money and run. Is take, that That's the advice. Yes. Very solid advice, Liz. Okay. Very Thank solid. you, Julie. Thank you. Well, I, I am happy to say it's time for the First Lady's Desk. You know, oh, yeah. this is the award-winning segment that we do here at Satellite <laughs> Sisters, where for years, in a very bipartisan uh, and non-political way, Satellite Sisters has supported all First Ladies in their efforts to do whatever they want to do. And our rallying cry is, leave the ladies alone, right? right? That they should just be free to do whatever they want, and they should and they should not be subjected to to superficial criticism. So you can imagine how excited I was to uh, to read in the news that there was going to be a special first ladies exhibit at the Bush Presidential Library here in Dallas, Texas on the cap- campus of SMU. And the title of the exhibit is First Ladies Style of Influence. And it opened March 1st and it's running through October 1st at the library. And uh, so I, of course, I was going to 
to get right on it because I wanted to report on it for Satellite Sisters and the First Lady's Desk. So I popped over to the Presidential Library. Um, very easy to get to, nice free parking. So, uh, you know, very, very easy to use. And I went in, it was, um, it was in an afternoon, went through the security and went up to the ticket counter to say, you know, to buy a ticket. And um, I was just purchasing the ticket and the the guide said, well, you start um, going through the museum over here. And he was pointing to the, you know, the general area that you start the museum. And I said, well, I just want to go. I've been through the museum, uh, which I enjoyed, but I just want to go to the first lady's desk. And uh, I want to go to the first lady's exhibit, excuse me, not desk. And the you guy the uh, <laughs> said, oh, well, it's temporarily closed. I said, oh. well, how can it be closed? It just opened March 1st. Uh, it didn't say it was closed on your website. And I could see his eyes kept going back and forth. He didn't really know what to say. And then another guide came up. And uh, she was like, "Well, we have a very we have a VIP tour going through." And I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, how long will that that take?" And she was like, "Well, it's a very special <laughs> VIP tour." I mean, this lady, her eyes were popping that's, out of her head. That's cute. That is very. That's she cute. was <laughs> so excited, but obviously they were under you know they were that were under procedures, not yes. sworn to secrecy, not to reveal who the VIP was. And so, you know, it was clear it was going to be uh, quite some time and. And so I said, okay, well, I'll come back because, you know, you can't make a stink. You know, that's the, the that's. You didn't say, don't you know who I am? <laughs> I'm the I first lady. My bag. I didn't. I didn't go into that. If they had known that uh, who I was, uh, certainly maybe they would have asked yeah, to yeah. join me. But then the future so secretary of state. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm thinking, like, well, who would be this right. very special VIP? And unlike you two sisters that live in Los Angeles, where you have lots of movie stars just roaming around, showing up in Starbucks and various things, that's not the case in Dallas. And I knew that I had seen all the media coverage that when Laura Bush, the first lady, had opened the exhibit. So I thought, well, you know, so it's not like she's going through it again. So then as, as I'm, I'm going out of the presidential library, I notice two souped up suburbans. Okay, that's uh-huh. the dead giveaway because, uh, you know, this I know this is how VIPs travel is in, you know, you could see it was not just a regular car. It was a car that had, it had communication devices on it or I don't know what, but it doesn't look like look, Jay-Z and Beyonce. Yeah, yeah. 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 Unless it was Jay-Z and Beyonce. <laughs> but that, then I thought, well, who is it? Who is it? And so I started Googling around when I got home to see maybe there was some VIP in town. And lo and behold, attending the Women's uh, Food Service Federation uh, giant convention here in Dallas, Texas, giving the keynote address, which must have been a blockbuster event. Um, Michelle Obama, joined by Maria Shriver, were were in Dallas on that day. Wow. Okay. So, so that now, so good sleuthing. Uh, we, now we go back. We do some more um, sleuthing, and we find on Laura Bush's Facebook page that, <laughs> lo and behold, it had been Michelle Obama <laughs> and Laura Bush going through the first ladies' exhibit. I was twenty feet from them. Oh, I was there. Totally I was meant to be. Let you Don't in. you Yes. This, oh man. I, so that is pretty exciting. But I do want to say that this is a very interesting exhibit. So if you happen to be coming through Dallas, going through Dallas, you're, you know, whatever, please make an effort to stop in. Because what it does is it examines the role of first ladies and how they've evolved over time. Now, the title is somewhat misleading because it's first lady's style of influence. And while, yes, there are some clothes and memorabilia included in the exhibit, it is really not about clothes. Good. It is about Thank the women who's, who've held this position and how they've advanced diplomacy and other cultural, social, and political initiatives. They look at the role of first ladies through that of their role as hostess, as teammates, as champions, and policy advocates. And, uh, you know, it is really exciting to see, like, you know, then when you think about all the contributions Michelle Obama made with, with planting gardens 
or her Less Move campaign, but even the work that she did on behalf of veterans benefits. Yeah. Or how about um, there's a great film included in it um, by Laura Bush, and she talks about Lady Bird Johnson and what an inspiration she was to her when she start, you know, when she became first lady. Because you know, people mocked Lady Bird Johnson when she wanted to beautify America. But not now are we glad that <laughs> Yeah, not our mother. Remember? She yeah. loved those Ladybird's plantings in the middle of freeways and stuff Wasn't like that. Wasn't it Ladybird who prevented billboards being put yes. on the federal highways? Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean so she did all of that. Or you think about, you know, Betty Ford and talking about breast cancer yep. and addiction. Things that nobody had ever done. They said it is a position without a rule book, you know, or they could follow their passions. One of my favorite things in there was Lou Hoover, who I didn't know much about her as first lady. She apparently was a giant Girl Scout supporter and she had her own Girl Scout uniform made and we have it included in there. <laughs> That's fantastic. That. That's you fantastic. Love that. I and, do love that. And what I, what I, but what I also picked up on is that all of these women, they're all very, very different. They've done they followed different passions and interests but you know they all faced a lot of criticism even right. poor Martha Washington do you know when she became first lady she was criticized because she was giving weekly receptions in Washington and some thought it was like too much like the British aristocracy but you know Martha didn't listen to them she just went on and kept doing those receptions and brought our country together. So I highly recommend this. If you don't have a chance to go, I want to recommend their podcast that it, that accompanies this exhibit. And that podcast is called Ladies First. And we'll put the link on our website. And it's fascinating. And you get to hear their actual voices, which I love. Jackie Kennedy, Eleanor Roosevelt, you know, obviously not all the first ladies, but they do have a lot of recordings included so chuck full of fun information That's uh, great. G- give it a listen also Just- our good friend allison smith friend of uh, the podcast who is a wonderful photographer in dallas she shot the exhibit up for the new york times oh. so we'll put a link to that you can see a photo essay. in the show notes yeah in the show notes so uh there you go julie i am i'm sorry that you didn't get to oh, fulfill so your close. destiny really <laughs> it would have been your but destiny. i really feel it was my destiny to be there at that yes. moment yes. with those two women <laughs> Just yes. separated by a door. That's I know. all it was. I know. Well, yeah. you're, you're united. We were. In, there was no wall big enough to keep <laughs> us apart. Okay. <laughs> all right. Fantastic report. Good job. Good job. That sounds like an interesting exhibit. All right. Uh, oh, okay. That's so if you, great. Yeah, that is good. Rover.com forward slash sisters. Use the promo code sisters at checkout for $25 off your first booking. Rover.com forward slash sisters. Promo code SISTERS. Got right? it. Okay. And remember, we do put the sponsor names and links in the show notes. Right. So do, you don't have to pull over and write this down right now. Pretty soon, I think, Steffi will be able to log on to my computer <laughs> and read those herself. When okay, she, good. When she, she, when she meets to you. T, her... Her doctor of uh, quantum physics, who's going to be <laughs> just dropping in and checking in on her. All right. Okie doke. Well, okay, going back to dogs for a second, I did just uh, adopt a new dog about three weeks ago. I've talked to you about Hooper, Hooper, my dog, who's sort of a misfit, sketchy, Scotty dog. And we were discussing on the show the last couple of weeks about uh, where Hooper should sleep, you know, there, and because he was also dealing, I was dealing with some separation anxiety. So I know a lot of people are super into crate training and that it really helps control dogs anxiety because they like the den like feel of being in a crate. Right. Mm-hmm. But yes. I like the dog like feel of having the dog in bed with me. So having, so that was not my ideal solution. Uh, and, but I was feeling guilty about it. I got to say, cause I know you're right. I know that it, like for millenniums, uh, dogs have, you know, like to sleep in a den. So, well, sure. also you were complaining that the dog was waking you up the at dog night, licking your face. Yeah. He was, so we, wasn't yeah, we like, weren't going to get in your business, Liz, <laughs> yeah. but you asked our advice. Yeah. 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 But the, he, he is 
calmed down dramatically over three weeks. Yeah. Like, really, the anxiety is That's largely good. gone. It's hard to be yeah. a rescue dog. I think he's just confident now that every time I go away, I'm going to come back. And um, anyway, so, but here we go. Boom. In today's New York Times headline, out of the doghouse into the bed. For most Americans, dogs are no longer relegated to the doghouse. According to American Pet Products Association, almost 60% of dog owners say they regard their pet as a child or member of the family, and many let their dogs snuggle up to sleep right in their human owner's beds, often alongside their owners. Now, I just want to say, I know Hooper is not a child. Uh, you know, <laughs> Thank you. And I like to say, like, I don't, there's no confusion there for me. But he is a member of my family. You know, yes, so, yeah. and, uh, and by extension, your family. So anyway, so they studied, the question in the article is, but is sleeping in the same bed with your dog a good idea? Wouldn't they be disruptive to your sleep? So they studied this, and in the study, the dogs wore a device called a Fitbark. You know, like I have my fitness tracker on. Well, this is an activity tracker that attaches to the collar and records whether an animal is at rest and sleeping or active and at play. And the people wore an act to watch, which recorded the sleeping movements. Anyway, after seven days of testing, the researchers found that with the dog in the bedroom, both humans and dogs slept reasonably well. Humans had a mean sleep efficiency or percentage of time spent asleep while in bed of 81 percent, while the dogs were 85 percent. So in general, people slept slightly better when the dog was off the bed but still in the room. Uh, but having the dog in your bed does not appear to really affect your sleep. And there's some veterinarian here, Dr. Carlos Siracusa, who is the director of animal, animal behavior science at Penn Vet in Philadelphia. He said, if there are no problems and the owner is happy with letting the pet in the bedroom or on the bed, it's fine with me. So it's official. It's fine with him. And, <laughs> and, now, <laughs> and now that, uh, now that Hooper has started like licking my face, stopped licking my face. Oh, every, okay. Yeah, he stopped licking my my face every time he sensed I was awake. I think we have established some kind of, you know, good sleeping protocol. Yeah. However, this weekend, uh, it rained in Southern California, which doesn't happen very often. Uh, but once again, this happened like three years ago, like the last time it rained. Uh, my bedroom ceiling <laughs> caved in because oh, I'm this. I'm in a two story building. It's a flat roof. I'm the, I'm on the second floor, and I don't know. Like last time, it caved in. They we fixed the roof. We patched it in my bedroom. I thought all was good. And the other night, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I could hear something, but I was looking, looking, looking. Could not find it. Like I couldn't figure out. Like it sounds like a drip. Maybe it's outside. Anyway, could didn't know what to do. Went back to sleep. When I woke up in the morning. My entire mattress was just completely soaked oh, through gross. on that oh, side. Please. I know. Oh, terrible. It's so bad. Oh. It's so bad. So now, and I have a big Cal King bed, so it was yeah. in like the far corner of the bed. So I oh. was not feeling the wetness. Yeah. And, you know, Hooper obviously just moved out of the way of the wetness without alerting me to the fact. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Good well, dogs. Good dogs. Good dogs. So, so are you and Hooper moving to a crate? Is that yeah. your solution? <laughs> exactly, Julie. So I am now a guest in my own home because last night, so now we're sleeping in the guest room, which is challenging because it's a much smaller bed. So now we actually are waking each other up. <laughs> so I have that issue. And how do you dry out a big soaked mattress. I don't know. I don't know. It's been Liz. weirdly damp here. Like yes. normally in California, you just put it out on your porch. I know. Yeah. But it's actually been wet all week. So on my way oh. home from the studio, I'm going to stop at the hardware store and get a um, a dehumidifier and see. Oh, you might you might need to get like industrial strength dryers, Liz. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, when my water heater, you got to call some pros. Call some I, pros. I, just, okay. Don't Soon. go to the uh, don't go to the hardware store. Yeah. Call in the pros Call on this in the list. Pros. Okay. Well, anyway, so I thought I had solved the sleeping problem, yeah. but now that we're in a smaller f- footprint, there may not be room in the queen size bed for both of us. So yeah. anyway, but he's much better. Thank you very much for asking. I like that study that they actually care about how the dog sleeps. I mean, for God's <laughs> sakes, all they do is sleep all day. <laughs> oh, they do. <laughs> like, exactly. if they don't get sleep at night, you know what? They can sleep during the day. They can make it up during the day. So. But if they're up at night, it affects you. So, yeah. you know. Now I know. Anyway, he sleeps super well. All right. Uh, I'm going to 
I'm going to punt on the, the hair, the hat story. Okay. We're running, running out of time here. but uh, Okay, so let's go to a couple of things sure. in the Facebook group. You know, we always love when you join our Facebook group, just Satellite Sisters. Search on that when you go to Facebook. You'll see we have a page, which you can like, so you always get our news about events and new shows and things. But the group is where you get to participate. So a couple of great things in the Facebook group this week. You know, I had mentioned on last week's show that I was having a little trouble in the operation sea turtle um, fitness program sort of getting restarted after I came home from a vacation and then sat on the couch and watched the Olympic f- for two and a half weeks. <laughs> and I, was like, yeah. I had lost my mo. But on Saturday, I went to the water aerobics class down at the Annenberg Beach House. And uh, even though it was in the rain, uh, which I've already mentioned because that's why my roof collapsed. So I posted a picture of myself, you know, just so that everybody could see, okay, I was back on track, got a lot of good reinforcement. Thank you, everyone. I know everyone understands how hard it is to, like, stay on track or get back on board. But Lindy, in particular, posted a message that made me laugh. She said, your heart, lungs, muscles, thank you. I work at a health club in Ventura. Who shows up to swim outside in the rain? The 85-year-old. And she posted a picture of, like, the 85-year-old swimming in her pool. Cute. And the reason it made me laugh is because, you know, like, our mother yep. would go to water aerobics in the middle of winter in Portland, Oregon in, at an outdoor pool. Nothing stopped her. So so that was great. So thank you, everyone, for the Operation Sea Turtle uh, encouragement. Then there was another. Catherine posted an entertainment note, sisters. So I wanted to ask you the question Catherine posted. Has anyone been to see the movie Game Night? My husband and I went to see it the other day, and it was really good. So, Julie, have you seen that, you and your husband? I have not seen it. I'm, I'm looking for No, it looks fun. It is super fun. I went to see it. I would say... It's getting a hundred percent rating on the Satellite Sisters Facebook group. Oh, good, Everybody good. who said they saw it really liked it. There are lots of good comments there. It has a fantastic cast. It's Jason Bateman, who I think is always really funny. Rachel McAdams, who I constantly mistake for other actresses. For Amy like Ad- a- Adams. Amy Adams. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes. But she's hilarious in this movie. And then like Really a great cast all the way around. Lamorne Morris, you know, who's in New Girl. He's in it. He's hilarious. Your man, Kyle Chandler. Oh, Friday yeah. Night Lights. He's yeah. in it. Coach Taylor. There are people that make, there's some like cameos, people that are just in it for a little bit, like Chelsea Peretti. Anyway, it's a very funny, I would, I would think that for a married couple to go see this movie, it's basically about a bunch of married couples getting together with game night and the sort of ongoing issues. Things do not go well. Let's just say that. But the ongoing issues the couples have competing with and against each other, I thought it was very, very funny. So I recommend it. And I don't think it got a lot of buzz because it's just like a grown-up movie. Like, no teenagers are going to go see this. But I think the Satellite Sisters would enjoy. Okay. Good recommendation, Okay. Good Liz. review. Yeah. All right. And then now we're up to your March Madness land. Yeah. You know, it March is, as we've spoken about, a Women's History Month. It's mm-hmm. also International Women's Day. And I feel like I am personally, like, carrying Women's History Month on my shoulders oh. for the <laughs> The next <laughs> two How weeks. That, How okay. That? The next two weeks, I am interviewing or producing or talking to like 87 super interesting women. Like just, just Good bring it in on home. So this weekend we have our panel, yes. right? Uh-huh. Stay noisy panel. So three high level executives, mm-hmm. you, two other women, three high level executives, check, talking to them on Sunday. Yes. But I am also writing and producing the women in business issue for Pasadena magazine. So, in between talking to three high-level executives for you, I have three other high-level executives in the retail business that I am talking to oh. and interviewing and writing a cover story for. So okay. that's happening like Wednesday, Saturday morning, and Monday. Uh, okay. So I got that going Ooh. on. Panel Sunday, Monday. Okay. Then I have the International Women of Courage. So that and will these be women are level. amazing. Oh. Right. So these are women from all over the world, female change makers. They are all coming to Los Angeles. I am producing an event with them where women will be talking and interviewing. I'm writing scripts. We uh-huh. will also have a full complement of people from the State Department there talking. I'm interviewing if them. I'm left dr- there. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then several other like people that we are giving awards to, high-profile magazine publishers. So by the end of March, I think I will have talked to every woman 
on the globe. I mean, <laughs> I like. I, Don't I wanna, you think it's gonna? Are you feel like you'll be more inspired? Will make you smarter? I something? feel. I feel like both those things will be true. And then April first, I'm only talking to men. That's it for the month of April. Just men. I mean, I am really killing it. And then in between, we have Karen Carbo, who oh, is right, our, our March book pick. Our March book pick. So we have to read about. 29. We, we don't have, have to. to. No, we will be delighted to read Karen Carbo's book. Right, which is really delightful in praise. It's of, so fun to read. It is. I, I love reading the individual essays about all these extraordinary women. Yes. Yeah, so in praise of difficult women, life lessons from 29 heroines who dare to break the rules. So that's okay. happening. You can pick that up. And then we're interviewing Karen for the end of March. Yeah. So that yeah. is a lot of interesting, fascinating, high-powered global change-making women that I am speaking to. Yeah. Wow. That's a brilliant. Mean, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking maybe the problem is we're trying to cram all these women. One month uh, a year may not be enough for women. <laughs> Like 11 for them, one for us. I know it's Satellite it. Sisters. Are, that's our goal is to stretch 12 months a year <laughs> in, in praise of difficult women. Woo, March Stay madness. Stay noisy. March so. madness. So looking forward to it. But I have a lot happening. I have a lot happening. A okay. lot of research, a lot of talking, a lot of talking, a lot of research, a lot of, whew, a lot of writing. It's all good. Happy, okay. Happy to do it. And we are going to record our panel and drop that as an episode sometime later in the spring. We yeah. don't know when. And we are working out the Facebook Live thing. I, just, uh, I give us like a 90% chance of getting that pulled okay. off on Sunday. <laughs> That's good. That's good, Liz. <laughs> That's very high tech. I like it. <laughs> you know, if you just, if That's you're on just the Facebook they group. at Google and Amazon. <laughs> We're very hands-on with everything, right? We That's have, our problem. Uh, yes. Yeah, we don't have any people. No, we have Sergio, we have Sergio. coming. We have Sergio. Sergio Enriquez, our wonderful engineer, yeah. is coming on Sunday to make sure we get a high-quality audio recording Great. of the panel. So there you go. That's a lot of progress over last year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that is Sergio. That is. <laughs> all right. We want to thank our sponsors for today's satellite. So thanks to all our sponsors. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So there you Ooh, have it. Ooh. All right. Are we done? Yeah. I think <laughs> okay. we're done. Remember, well, after- we'll bring it on home this weekend, sisters. Yes. I, mean, I know you're going to have a great panel. I can't wait to possibly see the Facebook Live. <laughs> Okay, so if you're listening to this show, the next show you're going to get in your feed will be a sample of Safe for Work. But then, I can't wait to hear that. Yeah, yeah. then we'll be back. Will you guys have a, MC, a Madam Secretary recap on Monday over in the other feed? Yeah. Is oh, probably, yeah. I, did you see the look of panic on my yes, face? Yes, I did. <laughs> I have to get my highlights done. I did, <laughs> I did not anticipate Facebook Live. I got okay. to right. highlight my hair. <laughs> Sorry. What was the question? <laughs> Madam Secretary. Is there a Madam Secretary yes. recap coming on Monday? Yes. Wow, you really do have your hands I full. really do. Yeah. 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 And then we'll be the Secretaries of State by yes, next by week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so we're just heading down Sunset Boulevard after the show here, Jewel, and we're going to be... On- okay, make the pitch, Liz. Yeah. I think you can do it. I'm ready. My bags are packed. My bag. I'm just going to bring the one away bag. One away the one bag. bag. Yeah. The, the, the big carry-on. Get the, lo- get the big carry-on. Yeah, because you can charge your phone. It's a big carry-on. <laughs> All right. Uh, we are the Satellite Sisters. Don't forget, call your Satellite Sister. <laughs>